Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to install and use the Linearity plugin for Figma to create this colorful animation. Let's get started. The Linearity Move and Curve plugin is now available on Figma Community. This plugin allows you to quickly import your design from Figma to Linearity Move and Curve. To install the Linearity plugin, I click this icon on the Figma top menu. I select the plugin label. I type Linearity in the search bar. I select the plugin and I click on Run. For all seasoned Figma users, you might want to download Linearity Move and Linearity Curve before you run the plugin on Figma. I open the App Store on my Mac. I type Linearity in the search bar and I install the two software. Linearity Move and Linearity Curve are available only for Mac and iPad. I can import my artboards from Figma to Curve to complete my design. I can use Curve's unique smart features like background removal and AI background replacement. I can import my design from Figma to Move to bring my layout to life with the power of motion graphics. The library of animation presets allows me to animate my static design in just a few clicks. Let's start from the beginning. On Figma, I run the Linearity plugin and I follow the instructions. I select Frame 1 and Frame 2 and I click on Import in Move. Linearity Move opens automatically and the two artboards appear on the Scene Builder panel. I simply select and drag each artboard to the Scene Builder line at the bottom of the panel. I can create multiple scenes. When I am done, I click the Import button. To take full advantage of Linearity plugin, I can also use it to copy and paste elements last minute. On Figma, I select the logo and text. I click on Copy. I open Linearity Move and I paste it directly in my scene. Easy peasy. I double click on Scene 1. I select the logo and browse the preset library on the left. I select the preset Must Reveal. By clicking on the three dots icon, I change the settings of the preset. I can change the direction and speed of the transition before I click Apply. I select the double chevron and I apply the Must Reveal preset. This time, I change the direction of the transition to top to bottom and I click Apply. With the playhead set to second one, I select the first line of text and I apply the same preset. I move the playhead ahead of half a second and I apply the same preset to the next line of text. I bring the playhead to the end of the scene and I select the long line of text at the top of my design. I move the line of text using the alignment tool on the right. I've created a position transition. I select the animation bar and I change the timing from natural to linear. To slow down the animation, I change the duration of the transition from 5 seconds to 10 seconds. With the playhead at second zero, I select the image gallery group and I reposition the group. I move the playhead to second two and I change the position of the gallery again. I then move the playhead to second four and I change the position one last time to give each position transition a two-second span. I click on the pin icon. With pinning active, I can quickly determine the start and end points of my next animation. I move the highlighted area to the end of the animation and I position the playhead in line with the second pin. I use the green dot around the bounding box of the image to resize it. When I select the object on the right, I right-click and select Send Backwards. This is Scene 1's animation completed. I click on the project label to go back to the project's view. Then I double-click on Scene 2. I activate pinning again. I select the second pin and I move it to highlight a segment of the timeline from second 0 to second 2. With the playhead set on second 0, I select the image. Using the orange dot around the bounding box, I rotate the image. Then, I move it by dragging it outside the frame to the right. 
I've created a rotation and position transition. I select the image and I also change the opacity to add another animation bar. I bring the playhead to second two and I apply the master reveal preset to the text layers one by one. When I am done, I select the animation bars and I slide them along the timeline for a cascading effect. I click on the project label and go back to scene one. I select the logo and the text on the right. I right click and select group selection. I switch to design mode and I copy the group. I go back to scene two and I paste the group here. I reposition the group to the top of the canvas. I switch back to animate mode and I can see that I've pasted these elements with the same style and same animation keyframes. Back to the project's view, I select the lightning bolt icon between scene one and scene two and use the panel on the right side to add a transition between the two scenes. I select the push type and set the direction to bottom to top. I change the timing to natural and increase the duration to two seconds. To make sure I have enough space between the scenes to add this transition, I also increase the duration of scene 1 by 2 seconds. Then, I delay the start of the animation in scene 2 by simply dragging the animation bar along the timeline. When I'm ready, I can export my animation by clicking File on the top left corner and select Export. Here, I can preview my animation one last time before exporting it. Let's have a look at the exporting options. I can pick a different file format. MOV and GIF are also available with transparent background. I can set the video codec and tweak the resolution. I can also switch the frame rate and tick the transparent background box. Finally, to save my animation, I click on Export. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can learn more about Linearity Move and Curve from the Learn tab on the home screen. Let's bring our stories to life with Linearity.